The title of our today episode is Wisdom with Increased Capacity. Hallelujah. It says Wisdom with Increased Capacity. And our Bible reference is taken from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. And it said, And that from a child thou hast known the scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. And first, uh, first paragraph say, The wisdom of God is encapsulated in this world and will guide you through every aspect of life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 emphasizes the importance of wisdom and making it the primary pursuit in your life. It says, Wisdom is the principal things. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all that getting, get understanding. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The scriptures, as read in our theme verse, have the unique ability to make us wise unto salvation. It's one reason you must meditate on the word. Hallelujah. It's one of the reasons you must meditate on the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, AMPC says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Glory be to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Notice that it says meditating on the word will make you prosperous and cause you to deal wisely. That means it's all make you, it will make you discerning and sound. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and, and, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's still in further reading say, multiplied or increased grace means God can entrust you with even greater responsibilities. Because you are wiser, he knows that as a result of his wisdom at work in you, you will make sound judgment and choice. Oh, glory be to God Almighty, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what an amazing message. What, a, what an awesome message for today. Oh, hallelujah. Now we are going to say the prayer. But before we say the prayer, we have some beautiful Bible references attached to this beautiful message for the day. We'll briefly say the Bible reference, then go to prayer and close with our daily affirmation. Glory be to God. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, AMPC, the Bible says, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, the Bible says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Glory be to God. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, NLP, it says, Learn the message of Christ in all its riches. Fill your lives, teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God Almighty. Now we are going to say the prayer. You can put one of your hands on your chest and lift one to heaven unto God Almighty as you say the prayer with me. You can repeat after me or you can say it as you continue on it. Dear Father, I thank you for the wisdom found in your word. As I give attention to the scriptures, I open myself to a continuous impartation of divine wisdom. The word guides my choice and action. The, I have uncommon insight, a clear, deep, and sudden understanding 
of concept, subject, situation, and mystery. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Now we are going to take the affirmation. You know, this affirmation is one of the most outstanding part of this message for today. You know, it's like you proclaiming, making declaration, speaking rhema unto yourself, speaking a word into your future. So it is one of the part that you will never take it for granted. I urge you and I enjoy you to take more attention, keep more attention on this and say it with all boldness, with your feel, heart feel of faith, with your faithful confession, and you see that your life will transform from glory to glory. Hallelujah. I affirm that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life, and his life and nature that transcend the ordinary man life has been imparted to my spirit. My old life has been completely supplanted by the divine life, which is superior to sickness, disease, defeat, and the depravities of the natural man. I am no longer subject to sickness, disease, failure, or death. I am a new creation, born with the life and nature of God. I am an associate of God's kind. I invite an inseparable oneness and with union with divinity. I am superior to Satan, and I am above the forces of darkness. Because I have been brought into the God's kind, a divine pantheon, I affirm that divinity is at work in me. The knowledge of God's words in my heart caused me to walk in faith, dominion, glory, and power. The Lord my God is King Eternal. His word lives and abides forever. According to His supreme word, I affirm that my whole being is saturated with light. I radiate God's glory with health success prosperity and excellence my mind is flooded with the light of god's word and i only see pictures of life strength and health i know who i am i live above the exceptions trickery manipulation and lies of the adversary i function in absolute victory all grace ever favors and earthly blessings come to me in abundance so that i may always and under all circumstances and whatsoever that need the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to requires no aid or support hallelujah furnish in abundance for every good work glory be to god almighty i eschewed and purge forth from my heart all elements of anger bitterness rage of fury anger and has no place in me i delight myself in god's word and in doing his will always the word is in my heart, causing me to walk in righteousness and fulfill my destiny in Christ. My life is the expression of all that Christ is. Hallelujah. I unveil him to my word today through my thoughts, word and action. I am one with divinity and I have eternal life passing through my being as a result of this oneness. Therefore, no sickness, hallelujah, diseases or infirmity can stay in my body. The world sees Jesus in my eyes. I show them love they can't deny. His divine life is manifest through me, is manifested through me. I live in the consciousness of my divine life and origin in Christ. Hallelujah. Knowing that his wisdom, ability, and power are working in and through me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For his word is mightily at work in us by the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, precious Father, thank you for your word that your children have received today. Father, they receive it in meekness and in truth, O oh God in heaven, transforming their life from one glory to another. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord in heaven, their life, O oh God in heaven, are not limited to this world entirely. Father, Lord in heaven, they grow from level glory to another by the perfection of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your mercies at working. Blessed be your holy name, both now and forevermore. In the matchless name of Jesus, most righteous name we pray. 
Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God Almighty, both now and forevermore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for being part of this beautiful message today. Thank you for your active participation. Thank you for everything you've done. And I believe that as this message comes to you, your life will never remain the same. There is a sudden radiation of God's glory in your life. You are moving from one level of glory to other by the power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you so much once again for joining. Please don't forget to like the video. Place your comment on the comment section. For I am always available to attend to you, ask your question, your review. And don't forget to share the video to your friends, your families and neighbors. For that, for we to increase more in sharing the God's word to, the, to reach out to the whole world with God's message. Hallelujah. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell. So you will be notified on every of our drops on the channel. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you so much for joining again. I love you. Have a blessful moment. Bye. First Peter chapter number 2. And verse 5. Ye also as living stones, King James is lively, are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He says that we are living stones. We're God's building. It's a spiritual house, he says. And each one of us is a, a, a vital member of that building. Stones. Rocks. So you see, it wasn't only Peter who was to be a stone, a rock. Each one of us is a living stone. Hallelujah. Ye also as Living stones are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility in ministry, a responsibility in Christ. And we should wake up to that responsibility. We are the ones expected to win the world for Jesus Christ. You know that? We are the ones to win the world. And we have to do everything that's necessary to reach the world. Our concerns must be his concerns. That is to say, what he's concerned about is what we should be concerned about. What he cares about is what we should care about. Otherwise, what is life but emptiness? Life is nothing without God's purpose. I mean, think about it. You're here today. Your great, 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 great grandfather was here. Where is he? He's gone. Then the next one came. Gone. Then the next one came. Gone. Then the next one. Until finally got to you. So the question is, hey, what are we doing here? That's why Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So your purpose for life is very important. You, you should be definite as to your purpose for life. Why are you here? Have you found a reason for your being? Do you know most people live their lives without ever discovering why they were born? They just walk through life. Live an empty life. And all they think about is themselves. That's all they think about. I don't think of a worse life than the life of a selfish man who thinks about himself only. All his prayers are about himself. You, your family, your job. Everything's you, you, you. 
All your needs have to do with you, 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 you. That's an empty life. Live for a reason. Live for a reason. You know, um, sometimes I get concerned about the fact that uh, in, in our nation particularly, there's almost no such thing as patriotism, you know. Um, we don't care about our country. Terrible. Because we, we weren't raised to care. We weren't raised that way. So we don't care. So everyone who gets into politics or into government gets in for what he can get for himself. As a result of that, we bring that also into Christianity. Where all we do is, we think that, like I told you the other day, many people think God exists for them. They think God lives for them. All right? They don't think of the fact that they exist for God. They think that God is there for them. So, when someone gets into a political office... We think, okay, now that you are there, remember us. And that remember us, you're talking about cousins and, you know, relatives. They all come around. And if he doesn't steal from the government to give to them, they think it's crazy. If you get into a political office and you don't, make enough money to get out with a lot, you look like you're a fool. So people don't really get into politics or into government to do something for our nation. They get in there to get something for themselves. So it's, it, it's become a culture. It's a way of life. It's a terrible way of life. See, the problem with it is not the country in itself. The problem with it is what you, what you become. The character of your personality when you live that way. You become less than you were raised to be. Less than you were born to be. You know, so, when, when we bring it into Christ, we find ourselves doing the same thing. If we could use God to get what we wanted, we would use Him. I've said several times before that if anybody in this country knew where to get the certificate of ownership for all of the land of Nigeria... He would have sold it a long time ago. (laughs) If one person had it. (laughs) It's a terrible feeling. I'm serious. Terrible feeling. Terrible feeling. The reason we are that way is because we were brought up to be that way. That's what I mean. We're consciously and unconsciously brought up to be that way. And so that's the reason for the thuggery. We have thugs to help us get elected, to make sure nobody votes. You understand? I mean, it's terrible. In many countries, they're trying to make sure that people vote. We we have people here to make sure you don't vote. (laughs) But you see, they don't know what they are doing to themselves. So, let's come to this um, subject. Now, I said, what do we do for God? We want to get God to do something for us all the time. Oh, God, answer my prayer. God, do this for me. Do this for me. Oh, God, I need this and I need that and I need that. What do you do for God? What is your own responsibility? Oh, somebody says, well, my responsibility is to have faith to get something. Again, you want to use God. You're just having faith so that you can get God to do something for you. 
No. No. Turn again to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I read something to you the other day. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. You see that? He died for all. So that, now he says he died for all, and if he died for all, then we all died. But then he died for us so that we who live should no longer live unto ourselves, but live unto him. Live unto him. You cannot just be a Christian to get God's blessings. You cannot just be a Christian to have your prayers answered, to have a nice nice life for yourself no you're going to have to stick out your neck for the gospel of Jesus Christ Paul said certain things about his life while he was persecuted so much he said he was persecuted more than the other apostles he says and some of the others were afraid to be persecuted They were afraid to stick out their necks for the gospel of Christ among the Jews. So when he went to Jerusalem to visit, they called him. The other apostles called him. They called Paul. They said, um, you know, there are many Jews who believe and they are zealous of the law. And Paul was wondering, why, why are they zealous of the law? They're not supposed to be keeping the law now. The gospel has come. Christ has died. Christ has a reason. Christ has ascended. Why are they keeping the law? Oh, they said, you know, we, we, we don't want to stay at the waters. Now, um, what we want you to do is to shave your head and join those that have a vow. And so when you go to the temple, the crowd will see you there. And once they see that you are shaven, they will know that you also keep the law. And there will be peace. He said, it's okay. So he shaved his head. And went with the others to the temple. When somebody recognized him, he screamed and said, This is Paul. He's the one that's been troubling all the Jews, saying that we should not keep the law. He raised his voice against Paul, and the crowd came and they took Paul. They wanted to kill him because of his message. They were zealous to keep the law, but the law had been abolished. And they wanted to keep it. Why did the others not tell the truth about it? They knew the truth about it. But they were afraid to stand up for the gospel. See what I mean? Being afraid to stand up for the gospel. Being afraid to stick out your neck for Christ. Sometimes it happens when we, even where you work. There's some other Christians that they're always talking about and talking against. But nobody ever talks against you. They know you're a Christian, a nice Christian who doesn't trouble anybody. But these are the ones who are always preaching. They don't like them because they're trying to convert them. But they like you because you're, an, you're nice. You don't, you don't talk about Jesus too much. Terrible life to live. Terrible life to live. No matter how we strategize for preaching the gospel, we should not strategize to the point where we lose our confidence in Christ or where we are no longer bold enough to publicly proclaim his lordship. What do you do for him? What do you do for him? What's your own responsibility for Christ? 
Are you a soldier for the Lord? Are you a soldier? Are you a soldier? Are you a soldier? Or are you a civilian? How many of you are civilians here? Spiritual civilians. How many of you are spiritual soldiers? Are you a soldier? You should be a soldier. You should be tough. Okay, we want to pray. So we all stand up to pray. We're all joining our hands and standing up to pray. Then only you, you shift, 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 shift. Ah. <laughs> They're still holding your hands. Only you are tired. You sit down. You know? Always taking the weak option. Always taking the weak option. Okay, we want to fast and pray. Your own is to be broken by 12. You've been watching the, watching the time. As soon as it crosses 12, okay. But in Jesus' name, thank you. You've eaten. Only prayer and fasting till 4 p.m., you're already asking, asking questions. Um, what if somebody can take only meat pie? Is biscuit okay? What of meat without food? You're asking all kinds of questions. Just one day is fast till 4 p.m. You want to know, are there not different types of fasting in the Bible? Can I drink milk? You won't die. 4 p.m., you won't die. There have been days you didn't eat till 7, till 8, till 9 p.m. Nothing happened. Now, just till 4. Oh, you have doctor's permit to not fast. Doctor say I should always eat. You're calling your leader. Please, I just wanted to let you know. I know today is fasting and prayer, but doctor said I should make sure I eat. I've been taking some drugs for three weeks now. I must eat before the drugs. That's why you are still on drugs. What a life with drugs. When will you come off the drugs? Say, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Say again, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Did you know that in the Old Testament, it was the priests that were at the forefront of the war? Read your Bible. So when you say a priest, you don't mean the one that is hiding in the temple. When it was time for war, the priest was in front. It was the priest. Time for war. It wasn't the soldiers that were in front. It was the priest. They carried the ark of God and stood in front. So your priestly ministry comes first. If you're going to be very successful in life, your priestly ministry comes first. If you've not carried out your personal priestly ministry, you cannot reign as a king. He's made us kings and priests. But the priestly ministry comes ahead. Of your kingly authority. You know, people keep asking questions. Why is it that this person prays and it doesn't work? The other person prays the same way and it works. Sometimes, you see, you, you talk about faith. But faith is not empty. Faith is based on the word. Faith is based on the word. And when we say the word, not just... Uh, not just... The faith to receive something based on a promise. The word of God. The word of God is a revelation. Let me put it this way. Something that you need to understand. If you study in 1 Corinthians in chapter number 12, reading from verse 7, it begins by saying the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all, meaning for the common good. And then... The one is given and he tells us these various gifts of the spirit. The word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge, and so on and so forth. He lists nine different gifts. 
in that chapter. And these nine can be classified into three different groups. The one group is what we call the revelation gifts. And these are the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and then discerning of spirits. Incidentally, that one is listed toward the end. Discerning of spirits. These are the revelation gifts. Then comes what we call the power gifts. And these are the gift of faith, the gift of the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. Now the gifts of healing are given to us in plural. The others are gift, gift, gift. But in healing, he uses a plurality. And that does mean something. We don't have the time to discuss all that in detail today, but I'm try, trying to explain something to you. These are the power gifts. Faith. The working of miracles. The gifts of healing. Some even go gifts of healings. But whatever... It's in plural. Then you have what we call the utterance gifts. Utterance, to utter something. The utterance gifts. Now the utterance gifts are one, the gift of prophecy. Two, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. Then three, the gift of the interpretation of tongues. Three groups of gifts, endowments of the Spirit for believers. Revelation, power, utterance. Now, this is important. If you would study in St. Matthew's Gospel, the third chapter into the, uh, the fourth chapter... And also in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter number one, um, we're talking about here the, uh, the baptism of Jesus Christ by John and, and that beautiful experience there at the Jordan in what happened with Christ. First was the revelation. Second was the empowerment. After that, the utterance began. What do you mean by that? First was the revelation where the heavens opened and the Spirit of God descended. He saw the Spirit of God descending on him. John saw the Spirit of God descending on him. And he heard that voice of God speak. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Revelation. Revelation. Then he was filled with the spirit, empowerment. So there was divine revelation. Then there was divine enablement, divine empowerment by the spirit. The Bible tells us that he was driven of the spirit, led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So he was there 40 days and 40 nights. And then you remember he was hungry and then there was the temptation. All right, you remember? Then he came back. To do what? Preach. Utterance. And preaching is divine utterance. It didn't say he came to talk. See, he preached. Preach what? The gospel. Each one of us must also experience it that way. Revelation, empowerment, and then utterance. Divine revelation, meaning the Spirit of God revealing the Word of God to your spirit. Revealing the gospel to your spirit. Giving you an understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ in your spirit. You receive that revelation of the gospel. Who Jesus is. What he came to do. 
and how that he accomplished it and who you are today revelation and then be filled with the Spirit, divine empowerment divine empowerment then you say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me and without divine empowerment you can now have divine utterance you can speak for the Lord you utter words that's why I said in the last days I brought my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy that means they shall speak words of power but you see this will not work except you have the ministry of the Spirit in priesthood. See that? The priest ministers to God in things concerning men and ministers to men in things concerning God. Because the Bible says the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So the knowledge of God should be found in his mouth. Which means he teaches the word of God. He brings out revelations of God's kingdom to people. You see that? But he can't get it until he ministers first to God. He must minister first to God. A lot of times, our songs are songs that entertain us. Beautiful songs. And, and there's a place for that. What we entertain ourselves. When we sing about ourselves and about one another and about the church. That's beautiful. But then, we must also learn, more importantly, to minister to the Lord. You see, you can sing about him. But it's different when you sing to him. How great is our God. How great is his name. He rolled back the waters. Beautiful song. But in that song, we are singing about him. You see that? We are singing about him. See, there are songs that we sing about ourselves. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's about us. Beautiful song. So we sing those songs. So we sing about ourselves. We sing about God. But neither of these two is a ministry to him. Are you listening to me? So we must know the difference. And learn to minister to God because that is more important. Now, it doesn't take the place of these other two. Are you listening? It doesn't take the place of these other two. It has its place. That's the point. But that it should have number one place. See, one of the problems with many, many Christians is that they don't have what you call the spiritual order. They don't understand spiritual order. And in many churches, they don't understand spiritual order. Most don't. They don't understand spiritual order. There's order in the church of Christ. Whether or not we recognize the order. It's there. God recognizes it. Praise God. You still in this place? A spiritual order. So, our ministry to the Lord is number one in our responsibility in life. Look how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He said, when you pray. He says, after this manner, therefore pray. He said, when you do, say this. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Before the give me. 
You see, he was teaching the order. He didn't say we should pray that prayer. He gave us the order. The first thing he said you do is our father. You address him directly. Hallowed be thy name. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? He says you begin your prayer life with that. You praise him. You worship him. Did you notice in the 13th chapter of the book of Acts, when you read in, from verse 1 into verse 2, the Bible tells us about certain teachers and prophets, ministers of God, who were in that church at Antioch. And uh, Paul was one of them. While they were there, on this occasion, the Bible says, they prayed to the Lord and fasted. He tells us, as they ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said. The Holy Spirit spoke. As they ministered to the Lord. They didn't have to be saying, oh Lord, speak to us. We want to hear your voice. Speak. No, they just ministered to him and he spoke. Praise God. You know, many times we want to know what's the will of God concerning something. Maybe about our job. Maybe about something that you're interested in. And you want to know what the Spirit of God has to say about this thing to you. And you want to hear Him clearly. Am I right? You don't want to assume nothing. You want to hear Him clearly. Well, if you want that, minister to Him. As they minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, he spoke and they understood him clearly let me tell you did you know it's god's will and purpose and desire to talk to you personally and to have you understand him clearly he wants that more than you do he wants to do that for you more than you want it. The truth is, he's been doing it. But when your spirit is clouded with other things, other matters, you can't hear him. And I tell people, they ask, why do we fast when we do? Why should we fast at all? We don't fast to get God to hear us. We don't fast so God can hear our prayer. And so we can be more serious about the prayer for God to hear us and convince him to do something for us. No. It's the, when you fast, it's not God who's not eating. It's you. And he doesn't eat the food that you didn't eat. He doesn't need it. So your fasting doesn't change God. Your fasting changes you. It helps you position yourself where God's word can come to you. And sometimes where God even sees feet to talk to you. I'm not sure you got that. Should I say it again? I said, your fasting can put you in a position where God sees fit to talk to you. In other words, even though he's been talking, he's been leading, he's been speaking to you, and you've not been picking it. Fasting and praying can reposition you where the Spirit of God finds it necessary because of your spiritual reorientation. He finds it necessary to minister to you in another way other than how he's been doing it. 
So there are things we do. There are things we must do. Our own responsibility. When you pray on your own, take time not just to remember the things that you need. There are times you don't need to ask for anything. Are you hearing me? You don't ask for anything. If there's anything you're going to be asking about, be filled with the Spirit. Oh, did you know God's Spirit is God's answer? And that when we pray, imagine all the needs that we've got every day. I mean, if God expected us to pray about the things that we are concerned about, oh boy, that's just too much. I've got to pray about an uncle and an, and an in-law, and then about a friend, and about a neighbor, and about some uh, some members of the church and then some leaders and I got to pray about some non-Christian friend and some non-Christian relative and I got to pray about something that they said the other day that that other person said and that the other one said that the other one said that he heard the other one say that that other person said that he heard you know what I'm talking about and so I got to pray about oh the government and what the government is trying to do and what they have done and what they're you know if I've got to pray about all of these things then it's better to just die. <laughs> because there are too many and we just can't make it. If God expected us to do this. Now imagine what you would have to pray about. If he's holding you responsible for all your uncles, especially some of you that come from very large families. <laughs> imagine if you're responsible. Uncle Nat, Uncle Tom, Uncle Green, and all of them. You're going to pray for all of them. And then their families, and their large families. You're going to pray for them? You feel guilty every day. And when something happens to one of them, you feel guilty. Oh, I wish I had prayed. If I had prayed, this would have not happened. Do you know how many times you would cry and wish you had prayed? You'd be feeling guilty all the time. When something has happened to someone's clothes, I wish I prayed. Oh, God, I'm sorry you will repent today. Tomorrow, something else has happened, maybe this time to a friend. Oh, I wish I prayed. The secret to all these things is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Spirit. He says, thou would perfect that which concerneth me. When you're filled with the Spirit, one word from the Spirit can affect so many things. So many things. One anointed word of the Holy Ghost. No, you have to pray about your job. And while you're praying about your job, you're praying about your boss, you're praying about... Your, your, your employee, you're pr- praying about the financial situation, you're praying about the customer, and then you're praying about all these things. Ah. No, he didn't plan to confuse us like that. He planned to give us a life with absolute mastery all the time. That's why praying in the Holy Ghost is a great secret weapon. Praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, I don't know what you're waiting for. Pray in the Spirit. You just, you know, Take a chair or something or kneel or lie down and just speak in other tongues. And when you, you don't have to shout. Keep praying until your whole body is saturated with power. You know, you, you just. It's happening. Something is happening. You know what I'm talking about. Something is happening. You're staring up something. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for power from on high. It's come to our spirits. Now we can minister to God. When we lift our hands and Father, we worship thee. 
And the next thing we go in other tongues. For speaking, speaking, speaking. And while we're doing that, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Our root in life is being corrected. Certain people who would have come into my life in five years' time have been removed from there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? As I pray, God looks into my next year and my other year and he fixes things there when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Are you still there? So when trouble strikes, you say, they are bread. You say, I'm already done with all this. I've passed this level. <laughs> say, I've passed this level. Say it again, I've passed this level. Ha, ha, ha. I've passed this level. Say, there are greater things. I've passed this level. There are greater things. Say it again. I've passed this level. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you ought to work. You know, with the economic problems around the world, many companies are folded up and many are not making progress. And so they're laying off their staff and, you know, cutting down. And such a thing can affect you as a child of God. And so, maybe you're among those that have already been asked and you're out of work. I wonder what's going through your mind. I wonder what you're thinking. If your job was your source, you are sunk. You're in trouble. But your job was not supposed to be your source. Change your thinking. Your job is not your source. Listen, you are a child of the kingdom. You belong from another world. Don't you understand? Not this world. You belong in Zion. You belong in Christ. And because you belong in Christ, your prosperity is not based on your labor. Your labor is required. Because it's your opportunity and your, it's your, your window to the world. It's your opportunity to reach the world, to communicate, to reach out to them. Are you listening? It's another way for you to bless the world in which you live. But it's not your source. It's not your source. It's not your source. That's, listen, your confession should always be, this is not my source. Christ is my source. Hallelujah. Christ is my source. I don't have to have a job to be alive. I don't have to have a job to be me. No. But I do a job because of who I am. Come on now. Are you getting the idea? So if they lay you off one job, it doesn't make a difference. You just get a better one. They say it's difficult. No, 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 not, not for you. If nobody hires you, start one. Start one. Because you know who you are. If nobody hires you, get into something and start. Say, Father, nobody has hired me. But I know what I can do. Then start out with what idea God gives to you. Don't start saying, I don't have capital. I don't have money. I don't have somebody to help me. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. God said, Moses, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? He said, a rod. A rod. That didn't look like anything. But God said, put it down. He put it down. It turned into a serpent. Moses fled from it. God said, pick it up by the tail. 
You see, God was strategic because it was a real serpent. He said, pick it up by the tail. And Moses went and picked it up by the tail. It turned into a rod again. He said, my goodness. <laughs> then God said, put your hand into your bosom. He dipped his hand in there. God said, bring it out. He brought it out. He turned leprous. He didn't know what to do with his hand. And God said, put it back in there. He put it in there. Came back whole. Wow. That means you got a miracle hand. <laughs> then God said, now you go and perform miracles with that rod. With that rod, he ruled over Pharaoh. Question is, what do you have in your hand? What can you do? That's what he's saying. What can you do? Okay. Maybe you don't have much ability in one area. Learn. Learn another one. Learn another one. Train in another thing. Get trained in something. Have something you can do. If you have something you can do, this word will always need you. Are you listening to me? If they phase out your kind of business, learn another one. And the Holy Spirit will give you the inspiration you need to know what to do. He'll give you. He'll give you. Can you trust him? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you trust him? Even now, he wants to give supernatural ability. There are certain things that some of you tonight are going to discover that you are able to do. The ability will be given to you supernaturally tonight. Hallelujah. Can I read something to you? Let me read this to you while I'm on this. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. I'm reading from verse 3. What I want to read to you is further down, but um, so you can get the context. All right, from verse 3. Giving no offense in anything that the minister be not blamed. But in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments. In tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. Are you following this? Okay. He's talking about us ministers. Okay. It says, we approve ourselves as God's ministers in spite of all these things. All right? Then in verse 9, as unknown, yet well known. As dying, and behold, we live. As chastened and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. Did you notice that place there? He said, they regard us as poor. He said, yet making many rich. It, it says something there. Do you mean that we do have the power? It's Paul saying that he and the other apostles had the ability to make others rich? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's exactly what he said. There was something supernatural. People go to native doctors to do something for them and give them good luck. And it does work. It works from the devil's way. Just that, you know, for Satan, nothing goes for nothing. You know what I'm talking about. In Christ, 
We do have that ability. Otherwise, ask Jesus, where did the fish come from? Because there was no fish. And yet Jesus said, cast the net on this side and you shall find. The guy said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. There couldn't be any fish here. But because you said it, I will do it. They cast the net into the water. And now they couldn't pull it up. It was too much. When Peter saw that, after they dragged the net out and saw the multitude of fishes, he fell down on his face. He said, please depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Hallelujah. Ask Jesus where the fish came from. That same Christ that brought fish. Where they didn't have no fish. It's the one that gives you supernatural ability today. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you now that the anointing of the Holy Ghost rests upon you and you receive divine ability, giftings of God at this moment in the name of Jesus. That ability will cause you to prosper. In your job, in your business. Supernatural ability. In the name of Jesus. Speak in other tongues. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Who talk in wisdom? I don't understand why. This is my shoulder. Talk wisdom, brother. Talk wisdom. You're going. Ah! Ah! Oh! 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 Ah! To be healed. Be healed. Have you ever, just a moment, have you ever met some people? They hit their, ay, mommy, oh, mommy. Even some elderly people, they call the name of their grandfather. Ay, daddy, oh. It's wrong. Ay, be healed. If you don't say that, it may take you to the hospital. And the little thing can become big. Before you know what, they say you need an operation. Then they say they are sorry, they cannot really do it. You have to carry this thing the rest of your life. It was a little thing yesterday. Now you can understand it. It's gone worse. Give no place to the devil. (laughs) To me, it doesn't matter whether it's small or big. If I hit my heart, heal in Jesus' name. Heal. I'm not ready for any pains. Heal. Say this. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. Hey. Listen, even though we are calm, quiet, nice, loving, we are militant. We are. You know, you can't continue. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you. He's not ready for that kind of thing. I just thank you. You know, trying to be sweet to him. Sweet Jesus. He likes that when you worship. Okay, okay, okay. 
This is war. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Tell him how much you love him. Yeah. You be full of love and full of all that glory. Then he says, son, uh -huh, okay, speak some words of power. Come on. Come on. Say something. They say they're lord of lords of drug addicts in your area the lords of robbers in that area and here you are sweet jesus it's nice go ahead and worship but after you're done doing that sweet jesus then jesus says all right let's take over the environment come on come on then you say in the mighty name of jesus hey yeah, 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 yeah. glory to god You say, you devil of drug addiction, I command you to depart from this town. Go in the name of Jesus. You devil of robbery and violence, in the name of Jesus, I come against you now. Pack your load and go. Kabaya. Jesus 